Welcome to the lecture for Chapter 2 from Writing Logically and Thinking Critically. This chapter examines critical thought. In this chapter we will learn the difference between an inference, a fact, and a judgment, and how to evaluate the reliability of each, how to analyze and write about fiction, and how to analyze and write about visual images. Let's take a look at this cartoon. Here we see two, what we think are elves because of their peaked caps, shouting down a chimney. There's snow on the roof and there's smoke coming out of the chimney. What can we infer from this cartoon? Who are they yelling at? Well, it's clear from all the things that we can see that these are Santa's elves and they are screaming at him because he is on fire. Now, we don't actually see this, but all of the evidence that we do see peaked hats, the snow-covered roof, and the smoking chimney indicate to us that there could only be one person who was down there. What exactly is an inference? An inference is a conclusion about the unknown made on the basis of the known. Just like in the previous slide where we saw all of those visual indicators that Santa was down the chimney. An inference can be tested by the number of different explanations we can draw from the same set of facts. The greater the number of interpretations, the less reliable the inference. Let's examine some of the way we use language to talk about an inference. To imply is to suggest, indicate indirectly, or hint what a writer or speaker, action or object conveys. To infer is to arrive at a conclusion by reasoning from facts or evidence, what a reader, listener, or observer determines or concludes. Only people and animals can make inferences, but anything can imply meaning. Please examine the cartoon on page 25. Post your response to the question to exercise 2A in the discussion board. Let's turn our attention to what a fact might be. Facts are information that can be verified. The car is blue is a fact. Or, today is September 24, 2015. That is also something that can be verified. Just how reliable are the facts that are broadcast from the media? The 24-hour news cycle has lessened the ability to do rigorous fact-checking in the media before publication. And what is published or broadcast as fact is often unverified opinion. And very often, fact-checking doesn't take place until after publication by independent third parties. How is a judgment different from a fact? A judgment is an inference that expresses the writer's or speaker's approval or disapproval. Many judgments can be taken for granted based on shared cultural beliefs. For example, People who abuse children should be punished. Please take a look at exercises 2C and 2E and post your answers in the discussion boards for these exercises. As critical thinkers, we need to be able to distinguish between facts and inferences and judgments. Facts are verifiable information, and inferences and judgments may not be all that reliable. Expository writing frequently consists of a blend of inferences and fact with the one supporting the other. For the most part, when you are tasked with a research paper, you should keep in mind that most professors do not want just facts. Professors want to see what you make of the data, what inferences you draw, what criticisms and recommendations you offer, and never leave your readers asking, so what when they finish your paper? They will feel cheated. The same applies to an inferences only essay. A paper consisting only of inferences and judgments would irritate readers as they search for the facts to support our opinions and beliefs. These types of essays can sound just as bad as rants. When we use the phrase reading critically, we are using that to mean being able to distinguish between facts, inferences, and judgments and evaluate their reliability, and this allows us to analyze information effectively. We need to read critically or we are susceptible to false claims and invalid arguments. 
When we study fiction, we realize that fiction is implicit. It does not explain things explicitly. When we read, we are making meaning, and the meaning is dependent on our culture and experience, which creates context for what we are reading. These same sort of skills also apply to analyzing images. We must train ourselves to interpret visual images in the same way we develop our skills in making inferences as we read printed text. Examining ads to determine their underlying and often suggestive messages can be fun and instructive. The next time you're watching a television commercial for, say, a car, turn down the volume and just watch the images to see what they're really trying to sell you. In this chapter, we learn to distinguish between facts, inferences, and judgments. In written exposition, we must achieve a balance between facts and inferences and we must support our inferences with facts and reasoning.